start and introduce myself. Uh, I'm Marina Shereshov from the Lomonosov Moscow State University. Uh, that's the uh, oldest university in Russia, uh, founded in the 19th century. And I'm head of research center for network economy, engaged in, uh, in research and inter-firm networking, social network analysis applied to business and management issues, in sustainable regional economic development based on networking and in relationship marketing. And all these uh, mainly uh, applied to emerging market and cross-cultural studies. Uh, and I'm also uh, uh, an editor-in-chief of uh, Brick Journal of Economics. I, and I'll be happy to have some uh, papers from all of you in my journal because it's um, open access. Uh, uh, no fee, uh, covering key economic issues of middle-income developing countries, primarily BRIC countries, but uh, also many countries from Africa, uh, Latin America, uh, and so on. Uh, we publish research articles, review articles, and editorials. And topics of interest are broad. They cover uh, many areas, uh, but all these apply to middle-income developing countries, uh, preferably BRIC countries, preferably cross-culture, but still there are different papers just now on different uh, topics. And we are uh, uh, finishing our special issue on COVID-19 and the impact on BRICS economies. If somebody would like to join, we'll be happy to uh, review the papers. But just now to uh, my today presentation, uh, and agenda is quite simple. A research purpose, literature review methodology, results in data analysis, but I must say it will be preliminary results and conclusions and future research. So uh, what's the purpose of the research? Uh, it was uh, to examine differences in structure and participants of entrepreneurial networks in China, Russia and the USA, uh, because uh, our idea was that national cultures cannot but affect the function of entrepreneurial networks, especially those uh, which are personal entrepreneurial networks, but also institutional uh, uh, factors are important. So uh, formal entrepreneurial networks also are impacted by many factors. So we tried to uh, make a cross-cultural entrepreneurial network analysis uh, and uh, uh, first of all, of course, any research starts from literature review, and uh, these are some of our results uh, after literature review. It was very thorough, and uh, we uh, were engaged not uh, only uh, um, in the uh, recent published uh, literature, but also um, uh, those authors who started this. And you can see the uh, quotation of Rond of 1992, uh, that some individuals have a combination of uh, psychological traits with external factors which make them more likely candidates to attempt to establish a business given a suitable set of circumstances and of course it's uh, of course it's applied to entrepreneurship networking uh, and uh, 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 as to specifics uh, this is the role of family ties in entrepreneurship uh, we are sure it uh, matters and uh, the literature showed uh, that said, the signing, uh, singling of out of personal pro firm networks has drawn attention to the families that entrepreneurs come from. And it was found that the presence of entrepreneurs in the family increases the likelihood that children will become entrepreneurs, but not simply increase, but by tens of percent. There are some papers that uh, support this idea. So uh, there is a huge importance of family ties in entrepreneurial activity. And entrepreneurial careers are built on social relationships and networks. Uh, first of all, social relations to support business startups. Uh, of course, many factors uh, impact the networking and the entrepreneurial career um, is uh, a set of interlocking ventures actually because they sometimes start many times before they are successful and for different uh, needs different ties are needed uh, and this is also supported in the literature uh, and uh, the value of entrepreneurial network structures is dependent upon kinds of relations uh, as to entrepreneurial networking uh, there are some specific features, and uh, the most important thing is 
Actually, entrepreneurial networks, unlike other interfirm networks, which are also numerous, have a clearly defined specific of their dynamics. Because before uh, somebody, some person create, creates a company, there is, uh, of course, no interform networking uh, in this world because there is no uh, firm, actually. But there are already some personal entrepreneurial network, and uh, this network uh, prolongs uh, its uh, impact when uh, some entrepreneurial activity starts. There are different development stages, uh, and, um, uh, of course, we should understand that after the firm is created, the personal entrepreneurial network is step by step supplemented by interfirm networking. But uh, de facto, there, are, uh, there is combination of two networks, the pre-existing and developing personal entrepreneurial network and the emerging interfirm business network. Uh, and as to the personal network, uh, one of functions is to provide uh, uh, grounds for returning to entrepreneurial activity after some negative uh, situations, uh, first attempts to create one's own business, and then people start and start, and personal networks uh, are very important in these stages. And then we should uh, talk about formal networks and informal networks. Uh, formal uh, networks have their functions. You can see it on the slide. And informal networks also have some functions. But uh, the problem is that formal networks, uh, we can visualize them. Uh, but as to personal network, it's much uh, less easy to visualize. Uh, but uh, at the same time, this informal institution is very important in transition economies, especially because uh, operation of such entrepreneurial network can substitute a lack of weakness of formal institutions. And so to identify business network methods of mathematical data processing are applicable and we did it before, but as to information on entrepreneurial personal network, it can only be obtained as a result of interviews with, with entrepreneurs, analysis, some narratives and so on. So this is one of the most important source of information about connections between uh, the actions of informal entrepreneurial network members and the consequences. And so we, uh, uh, use narrative methods, which are actually widely spread in different academic uh, spheres. And you can see the quotation of Gardner uh, that uh, these methodologies are reflexive. Uh, that is the process of analyzing other people's stories, whereas researchers uh, are also looking into the mirror of our own stories of how and why our research is conducted. Uh, and we can use it in different contexts. Uh, but a distinctive feature of such text, which differentiates them from others, is the presence of form and dietary components. This is event, this is action, this is character or hero, and this is plot, which links together the first three blocks. And so what we did in our research, which I present now, we uh, used automatic content collection source press index, uh, widely uh, used in Russia. Uh, we collected uh, 315 interviews with businessmen on the internet. Uh, we also did uh, 40 semi-structured interviews face-to-face. Uh, -face. And we collected also entrepreneurial stories from YouTube. And then we used uh, thematic content analysis, which is uh, widely known, QDA minor, uh, and tried to understand what are the differences between uh, entrepreneurial networks uh, and uh, incentives of entrepreneurs in China, um, Russia, and USA. Uh, these are the uh, most important categories for the content analysis. Of course, we, look, we looked for network. We tried to understand what's with social entrepreneurship in, in these three countries, how people start a business, how they mention government, type of business, uh, some events, and uh, which is also very important, mission and vision. And so we have some preliminary results. We, we need more time to analyze it uh, more um, deeply, but uh, we can see that there are some differences just uh, in this pre preliminary results, because when we are talking about uh, <clears throat> Chinese uh, uh, 
American and Russian entrepreneurs, of course, they mentioned, first of all, business company, office, work and project. But then differences begin because for United States, people are mentioned, people, men, women, persons and so on, people uh, are mentioned uh, quite often. Uh, it's also for Russians, but for uh, Chinese entrepreneurs, time is uh, on the second place. Uh, for uh, Russians and U.S. entrepreneurs, time is on the third place. And uh, uh, on the third place uh, for Chinese are market consumers. So they are thinking about how to uh, sell the products and how to understand consumers. You can see <clears throat> that there are also differences uh, in, in other uh, mentions because, for example, money for Russians are... Uh, higher than for uh, for Chinese, for example. Sorry, Professor Marina. We can yeah. see only your fast phase of PowerPoint. I need. I think you can. Yes, now it's fine. Thank you. Uh, and and uh, just to tell you, you've got a minute. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I'm finishing just now uh, because uh, we have some uh, uh, differences also in this frequency analysis. You can see 70% for China in goal and vision, 15 for entrepreneurial associations, and 70 for business activities. This is quite different for USA. You can see 91 and so on for uh, partners and companions, and only 4% for this in Russia. And so I'm coming with my conclusions. Uh, can you see this slide? Yes? Uh -huh. Uh, so informal networks are very important for all three countries, but in China, a special philosophy is associated with entrepreneurship, which is not limited to the goal of making a profit. The role of father is great. And of course, uh, associations of young entrepreneurs and membership in the Chinese Communist Party uh, is very helpful for them. As to interviews with American entrepreneurs, uh, they rely not on classmates, but on partners uh, or other investors. And this is the philosophy of the Schumpeter entrepreneur, actually. And as I've to got, Russia, I have to stop you there, yeah, Dr. Shurashiva. Yeah, um, it's difficult to be an uh, entrepreneur in Russia. That's finished, actually. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank all you. All right.